first happy great American race day in honor of the Daytona 500 starting in just 30 minutes. We're putting our pedal to the middle. pit crew that's all you're gonna need trust me helping you get closer to the finish and to that cash prize we get things going on twitter before every game of hq sports and today we wanted to know what is your favorite iconic moment in nascar history you can find us at hq sports on twitter or you could drop your answers in the chat right now at b heath 1415 says 1976 david pearson beating richard petty in a crowd finish ever at Johnick eight says when Dale jr. Won after his father's death and when Danica won pole position at Tisha Dominic says it's a sad one. The loss of Dale Earnhardt senior. Ah, uh, yes. Tomorrow will be the 18th anniversary of his passing, but now on to some happy ones. One of my favorites is still to come as a question in this game. So look out for that. But here are two of mine. 20 years of trying 20 years of frustration. Dale Earnhardt will come to the caution flag to win the Daytona 500. Every man on every crew has come out to the edge of pit lane to congratulate the man who has dominated everything there is to win in this sport. What a race. Wasn't that something to see? And more recently, our guy Bubba Wallace making history as the highest finishing African-American driver just last year. Pull it together, bud. Pull it together. You just finished second. It's awesome. <sighs> He's got to pull it together today because we're rooting for him here at HQ Sports. Okay, team, instead of 200 laps, I'm only taking you through 12. If you could speed through them all, all of them, and make it to the checkered flag, then you will become our newest HQ Sports NASCAR MVP and get a piece at our cash prize. We're playing for $1,000 today. Yes, enough to toast or win with a little champagne shower. If you're like me, champagne on a beer budget, am I right? And you can still earn points on all questions that you answer correctly and also by sharing your levels on social media. The higher your level, the more free passes you get, making all games on HQ just a little bit easier to win. Let's see where that grand prize is at right now. $93,999. Whoa, said that all wrong. $93,997. That's a big prize, and it's only growing. So keep earning those points to get a piece of that prize. And nothing pairs better with the great American race than the greatest American snack. Hot wings! Whether you like it hot or not, you will want to watch HQ Trivia tomorrow night at 9 p.m. to find out just how much Scott Rogowski can handle. It's going to get spicy up in here with some spicy questions and some spicy hot wings. We're turning up the heat tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern time with a special guest, so you're not going to want to miss that. Hey, right now, why don't you take this opportunity to pick up an extra life if you need it. It may help you get the edge that you need to win. All right, to the over 150,000 racers ready to see if you can make it to the finish line. Let's go. Team HQ Sports, start your engines. And you know what they say, if you're not first, you're last. Round one starts right now. What type of flag is waved to mark the end of a NASCAR race? Checkered, polka dot, Swedish. Nice and easy here, team. Well, if you see a red one, you better slow down. If you see a Swedish flag, I'm actually really not sure what's going on there. Maybe Swedish meatballs are available in the concession stands. But when you pass that checkered flag, it's all over. Checkered flag is your answer here at round number one. 122,262 of you got that one. Who's making it past the checkered flag here? We're on to round number two. What announcer likes to start races with the catchphrase boogity, boogity, boogity? Mike Joy, Daryl Waltrip, or Ken Squire? All right, team, it goes more like this. Boogity, boogity, boogity! Let's go racing, drivers! And I wonder what that actually means. Let's see. What does it mean? Who knows? But it's definitely more exciting than green, green, green. 
Well, thank you, Bubba Wallace. Daryl Waltrip coined this funny phrase, and we've even seen it in the movie Cars. And it wouldn't be race day without it. Not sure what it means, but Daryl Waltrip says it every time. 95,165 of you knew that one. And hey, team, I got a question for you. What city has the worst drivers? Let me know in the chat right now, and we're going to revisit this right before our halfway point. Round number three. What marking is put on a car to signify a rookie driver? Green bumper, white R decal, or yellow stripe? Whether you're an HQ Sports rookie, welcome, or a vet, you got a chance to take this win home today. This is the NASCAR equivalent of a student driver sign. A yellow stripe is placed on the back of a rookie racer's car to let everyone know, hey, we're a little bit new around here. Yellow stripe is the answer we were looking for at round number three. 72,080 of you getting that one, knocking out close to 50,000 of you here at round number three. We're just getting started. Here's number four. Who was the first woman to compete in a NASCAR Cup Series race at the highest level? Courtney Force, Danica Patrick, or Janet Guthrie? Yes, she also famously said, I'm a woman, so what? But back when she made history in the World 600 race, it was so long ago that the Top Series was named after cigarettes, the Winston Cup. Janet Guthrie finished 15th in that race and later raced in the Daytona and Indy 500s. Janet Guthrie is who we were looking for here. 30,592 of you getting that one right. Knocking out over 80,000 here, over 77,000 thinking it was Danica. We went back a little bit further than that. Let's see what you got. Round five coming at you. What nickname is associated with the 2018 Cup Series champion, Sliced Bread, Wild Thing, or the Cuban Missile. Well, the 2018 Cup Series champ, Joey Logano, was a stock car racing super prospect. People even joked that he was supposed to be the best thing since Sliced Bread. Red. The Cuban Missile is Eric Am Almarola, and Wild Thing is the younger Bush brother. Sliced Red is the answer that we were looking for here. 40,649 of you knew that one. But hey, we're talking about the worst drivers. So at Sports for Life says Los Angeles. Do people even drive in Los Angeles? I feel like they're always just stuck in traffic. At Marcolini says Toronto. All right. And Feed Me Diamonds says Dallas. I'm going to go with Philly. Philly is my answer, not only because I dislike Eagles fans, but Pennsylvania drivers, come on, move over. Let's see what our guy Bubba Wallace has to say. The cities with the worst drivers, there's multiple. Statesville, connecting to Cornelius, connecting to Huntersville on 77. You guys are the worst. Well, uh, thanks for the tip, but I don't even know where any of those cities are, so how can I avoid those places? Thanks for participating, everyone. We are on to round number six. What car maker has won the greatest number of manufacturers' championships? Chevrolet, Dodge, or Ford? We're halfway through here, team. Whichever company's cars rack up the most points over the course of a season is awarded with the Manufacturer's Championship. Eight companies have won, with Chevy leading the way. Ford is the defending champion this year. Bubba's driving Chevy, so we're rooting for that. Chevy is the answer here at round number six. 55,294 of you got that one right. Knocking out over 40,000 of you here. We got half a game left. Let's see how you hang in there. Round number seven. Which of these tracks is not considered an oval? Rockingham Speedway, Watkins Glen, or Memphis International? Watkins Glen is one of the few regular road courses in NASCAR, which means it's one of those crazy tracks with both right and left turns. Wild. Watkins Glen is what we were looking for. 53,083 of you know that one. And hey, I'm taking you for some unexpected turns here. Let's see how good your handling is for round number eight. Who received the highest percentage of votes for induction into the NASCAR Hall of Fame? Jack Roush, Jeff Gordon, or Roger Penske? It's all about speed here. 
I'm not talking about these guys, of course. I'm talking about your speed with your answer tapping. Well, with 96% of the vote, new Hall of Famer Jeff Gordon narrowly missed becoming the first unanimous induction. As we know, Gordon is a four-time cup champion. Jeff Gordon wouldn't be a NASCAR game without his name in here, right? 29,104 of you knew that one. And hey, as we get closer to the finish, I need you to pay attention. No, really. This next one, you're going to want to have your eyes on the screen. Here it is. What Allison Racing family member was driving the car involved in this famous crash and fight? The turn. They're hitting the wall. They're head on the wall. They slide down to the inside. Let's watch those third place cars. There it is. What Allison Racing family member was driving that car? Was it Bobby, Donnie, or Davey? We showed you the crash. You gotta tell us who was involved. Bobby and Donnie, as well as Bobby's son Davey, were all successful NASCAR racers. But this iconic crash and then fist fight is probably my favorite NASCAR moment. Let's see the full thing. Donnie Allison throws the block. Kale hits him. He slides. Donnie Allison slides. They hit again. And there's a fight between Kale Yarborough and Donnie Allison. The tempers overflowing. Whoa, it happened on the last lap of the Daytona 500. They were neck and neck until the finish. Kale Yarborough and Donnie Allison. Donnie is who we were looking for here. 7,318. Over 20,000 of you knocked out here as we go into our final three questions. Round 10. Which of these Speedway tracks is the shortest? Eldora, Chicagoland, Martinsville. Hey, maybe the shortest, but don't count her out. Let's see what our guy Bubba thinks about this one. They call it the Big E, but it's not that big. It's only half mile around, and it's not even paved. But that just makes racing at the Eldora Speedway all the more intense. You heard it. Eldora Speedway may be the shortest. But she's intense. Eldora is the answer here. 3,746 of you knew that one. We got two questions left. Can you hang on to the finish? Round number 11. Who holds the record for most times voted NASCAR's most popular driver? Dale, Ann Dale Earnhardt Jr., Richard Petty, Bill Elliott. Let's make it count here, team. Two left. The record 16-time winner of this award is Awesome Bill of Dawsonville. And he might have won it even more if he didn't take his name out of the running after winning in 02. See, sometimes it is a popularity contest. Bill Elliott is your answer here. 2,563 of you knew that one. And you know what that means. We are down to the final lap. Everything that you have trained so hard for all comes down to this moment. You're making that final turn. You see that checkered flag in the distance. Can you make it past it for the win? Let's see if you got what it takes. Round number 12. Who won the Daytona 500 from the worst starting position? Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth, or Kevin Harvick? It all comes down to here. You gotta rev your engine now. The 2009 Daytona 500 was weird for a couple of reasons. One, it ended 48 laps early because of rain. But even a short course was enough for Ken Seth to win after starting all the way back in the 39th position. Matt Kenseth is the answer here. And we have 1,110 new HQ Sports MVPs. Congratulations. <laughs> and 10 winners oh yes you did it we didn't go through 200 laps but 12 were hard enough and you've proven yourself as champions the beezer 90 cents is coming your way fun loving another 90 cents is coming your way it looks like we're all taking home a prize of about 90 cents and hey 
That's 90 cents more than you started this game with 16 minutes and 46 seconds ago. Spit jabber, 90 cents is coming your way. Amazing, amazing work. MJ Rocks 2, I see you there. 90 cents is coming your way, and we are just in time for the race. Congratulations and amazing work, Team HQ Sports. Congrats again to all of our racers. Not only were you fast, but you were accurate. Your skills continue to impress me. Join us for more HQ Sports every Monday and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Hey, that's tomorrow. So come back and join me tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Keep up with us on Twitter at HQ Sports and me at Lauren underscore Gambino for game day updates and all kinds of fun stuff. Now, we got a racer to track. Come on, car number 43, Bubba. Bring it home. I'm Lauren Gambino. Until next time, remember to hydrate, focus, and keep your head in the race.